And I've got a drink with the microphone. It's gonna, so you're going to hear me slurping. Right, drum roll. The first time I ever touched a girl's chest, I was 15 years old. Um, and she was called Emma, and it was on a beach in North Wales. Uh, this isn't Emma. This is a girl, uh, a picture I found on the internet. And I wasn't searching for girls on the internet. I was searching for pteropods. And the thing that's behind her is a pteropod. This is the real beach. This isn't off the internet. I went back and photographed the place. Um, she wasn't wearing a bra. Now, try this new way to accent your figure. Cross your heart, see? You're suddenly shapelier. Well, that's what this new Playtex Fashion Magic Cotton Bra does. It crosses your heart with stretch to lift and separate. You're suddenly shapelier. This cross your heart shaping is only on Playtex regular Fashion Magic Bras and new long lines. That's an advert from 1960 in America for Playtex bras. And um, it's interesting because the lady doesn't have an American accent. She has an English accent. And it makes me think every time I see things like this how young America is as a country. 13 days. And it's hard to believe that they ever existed. They'd become legends before the smoke over the battle had blown away. What kind of men were they? Well, we know that they died. That's John Wayne. Um, he does have an American accent, which is weird, because in the 1800s, in America, cowboys didn't have American accents. This guy probably had a German accent. It's, uh, the, it's the Marx Brothers, and it's, um, people know it as the mirror scene. It's from Duck Soup from 1933, and I think there were seven Marx Brothers. I'm not sure. There was a lot of them, but there's the three that were closest in age and looked similar were uh, Groucho, Harpo, and another one. can't remember his name. There was another one that was called Adolf. But in 1911, he changed his name to Arthur, which is quite interesting. No one wants to be called Adolf. Um, this is another sort of mirror, but it's a mirror into a different time or a different reality. It's called a parapossible situation. Um, this is, these are actually lots from Sotheby's that have been auctioned that are from the film Back to the Future. This is this moment in the film where something's happening in a reality which is changing a parapossible situation, a different reality, the consequences of it. So he's fading in and out of existence by his actions. This is another one from Sotheby's. Um, I always say that this is a parapossible situation. This is my, it's, it's a photograph, like a work that I made called uh, My Family Before Me. And if I'd existed, I would be here. That's my mum and my dad and my brother. But I'm not there. This is another parable, a parapossible situation. Um, I don't know why, I'm really intrigued with this image, but I don't know why. Um, we were in Switzerland in Stalin, and it was very late and a video wasn't working. And I was, uh, we'd had some beers and I was a bit bored. And I, uh, I took my wheelchair over and screamed and lay on the floor. And everyone came running out of the video installation. What happened? Nothing. This is another, oh, this is a good bit. We get to use the smoke machine. Um, 
I've done this lecture once before at the White Chapel in London, and I asked for a smoke machine for this bit, and they wouldn't let me have one because it was going to set off the smoke alarm. Isn't that terrible? So this is the first time we've had a smoke machine. I've got a button here. It's quite effective. It makes me look like I appear like Elvis or something out of out of a floating on a cloud of smoke. Um, it's quite good. I don't should I do some more. So this is a work by. I want one of these at home. <laughs> this is a work by George Henry Longley, and he's a, a, an artist friend. Who uh, he's quite young, really good artist, and he told me about his degree show, which was at St Martin's about five years ago. <laughs> Is the smoke alarms here? He told me about this work that he'd made, which is called The Language of the Exhibition. And he told me, or I remember, I was in a pub again, having a conversation. Um, he told me, <laughs> he told me that um, he made this work that I thought, he said, he made a work that when someone left the space, the exhibition space, a smoke machine made smoke as if everybody disappeared into a cloud of smoke. What if the fire engines come to save us? Um, so that's, how I I, that's what I remember from this night in the pub. But obviously we were in a pub, so we'd all had a drink. And what it turned out, I found out later, that it was just a smoke machine that he had in the space that was on a timer. So every two minutes it went like that. And I wonder if it'll clear. It might just stay like this. Um, so I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I made a work that was the way that I had remembered from the pub George Henry Longley's work which uh, consists of a number of sensors on the door. So that it's only when people leave the building that the smoke is emitted, but it's emitted by the door. So it's as if they disappear into a plume of smoke. But what I like about it is that you never see it because you've left the building. So if there's nobody there, there's just you in the exhibition on your own, you walk out. You don't know the work even existed. But if you're there and, some, and someone else walks out, you see the evidence of their presence in the space. Like that. But this one's better. There was a baboon who one afternoon said, I think I shall fly to the sun. So with two great palms strapped to his arms, he started his takeoff run. Mile after mile he galloped in style, but he never once left the ground. You're going too slow, said a passing crow. <laughs> Try reaching the speed of sound. So he put on a spurt, by God how it hurt, the soles of his feet caught fire. There was great clouds of steam as he raced through the stream, but he still didn't get any higher. We didn't even practice that. Just did it freestyle. <laughs> <laughs>